Solid Signal Podcast for the week of September 25th, 2017. Well, my friends, yesterday was it. It was the day that geeks across the world have been worrying about and thinking about for the last, oh, I don't know, year and a half or so. It was finally the premiere of the new Star Trek series, uh, Star Trek Discovery, which uh, is the first Star Trek series, believe it or not, since 2005, which is pretty darn amazing. That's a very long stretch to not have any Star Trek television shows, if you think about it. And I can't help but giving a few opinions, not about the show itself, because I'm not a television reviewer, and it's pretty obvious that uh, my opinions on that are superseded by some much more talented people that I am associated with. However, it's what Star Trek Discovery means and how the premiere was handled that I want to talk about this time. And you can say, oh, there he goes again. He's not talking about TV antennas and whatever, and he's he's gone way off script. Well, okay, yeah, you caught me. So let's get past that, and I'm going to do it, and you're going to complain, and all right, enough of that. First of all, the plan has been for several months to to air Star Trek Discovery's premiere right after football. Now, okay, it's not like there's no crossover between people who watch football and people who watch Star Trek. It just seems like an uneasy fit um, for a lot of reasons, and, that, and, and many of them became very obvious last night. Of course the game ran long, and that was no surprise to anybody. But, um, you know, when, when you look at that, uh, there were a lot of people who had been waiting for this show for a very, very long time, and um, and they were disappointed. The idea was to air episode one on free television right after football, and then if you want to see the rest, well, you had to sign up for CBS's streaming all-access app, and that that's kind of part two of the problem. You see, as I understand it, and at least from what I've seen, part one was really honestly not the best episode to really draw in people, to say, here's your free taste. If you want more, you're going to have to pay for it. If I had only seen part one for free, I'm not sure that I, if I were a sort of regular person, would have been willing to invest another $7 a month for more episodes of this show, especially because it seemed incomplete and the pacing was slow and for a show called Star Trek Discovery that takes place on a, sh on a ship called Discovery, you didn't see the Discovery and practically nothing was discovered. It just wasn't the best hour of Star Trek. It wasn't the one that really draws you in and I think that was a mistake. So moving on to that, so let's just say that you are inclined to watch it anyway, which this is, I think, the, the point. Star Trek's got a large baked-in fan base, and they could have made this show any sort of, they, they could have made it a standalone science fiction series, but they didn't, and they chose to leverage that Star Trek baked-in fan base, who have been, some of them, fans for over 50 years. So here's what you do. You go to the... Uh, you, you go to the CBS app, you know you're going to watch episode two, you go through an extremely long and tedious and unnecessarily privacy-grabbing sign-up process. You agree that you're going to pay the $7 a month for the commercial plan or the $10 a month for the no commercial plan, and you go ahead and watch it. And episode two is a lot better, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that CBS knew that they could get at least a couple of months of people paying for their all-access app, an app which myself and, and Jake Buckler both agree is not otherwise worth it. But you're going to get people signing up for a couple of months because they're going to watch Star Trek. They're either going to watch it that way or they're going to pirate it. And I think that there's enough people who would actually pay for it, myself included. It's just, you know... It feels like CBS is taking us hostage. That's not fair. Um, and it doesn't build goodwill. Now, it doesn't stop all of us from going ahead and doing it, going ahead and watching. But unfortunately, what you end up with is a lot of bad feeling between the user base 
and the provider, and that's not what CBS needs. CBS is one of the only major networks that does not feed its programming to Hulu, choosing instead to charge as much as Hulu charges for everything else just for CBS programs, and not even a complete catalog of CBS programs. I mean, if this were every single program that had aired on CBS since 1950-something, well, I'd be impressed, let's put it that way. But between licensing restrictions and copyright and what have you, they didn't get that. It's not a very good selection of programs. Uh, and while $8 a month is really not that much to spend, it just rubs people the wrong way. And what's funny is that CBS's history with Star Trek is not exactly uh, very firm anyway. Star Trek itself was produced by the Desilu Production Company. That's right, Lucille Ball was the one who produced Star Trek, and it aired on NBC. Well, through a long history of mergers and acquisitions, well, uh, CBS and Paramount, which were at one time tied together, uh, became the custodians of Star Trek. And when CBS and Paramount went their separate ways, Paramount got the film... Uh, franchise and CBS got the TV franchise which it had never been associated with before and so their big move in trying to finally attract the Star Trek fan base after 11 years which they legally had to wait it's a, another whole long story was to hold fans hostage with a according to the market overpriced service without a lot of content and certainly without a lot of stuff you can't find somewhere else I think this is all going to backfire for CBS. I think it's going to, in the end, make it harder for people to get into the Star Trek franchise. And as some people have been fans for 50 years, we're talking about people, you know, the, we're going to have fans passing away. You need new fans, and I'm not sure that this particular move is going to do it. Maybe at some point the folks who run CBS will see the benefit of moving it up to broadcast, and then all will be well. Oh my gosh, I went almost seven and a half minutes on this. Why didn't somebody stop me talking about Star Trek? You guys have a great week.